So quite a few more wars have popped up. First of all, Africa has once again broken out into a pretty big continental war, uh, and we might see the fall of the Congo, as well as we see like the third attempt of the Korean offensive war to take over the Vietnamese uh, Hanoi. I don't know why I delayed by saying Vietnamese Hanoi. Uh, thought about redoing that intro, but I decided against it for some reason. <laughs> Anyways, just talking about some random things that don't really matter. So maybe this time the Koreans will probably, they might be able to take over Hanoi because they're actually going to engage the, uh, the fleets that they have, the pretty massive fleet of turtle ships that are behind in technology, but that's fine. They could still try it. Uh, ooh, again, again, Darius is going to attempt to take over the Suez Canal uh, because he sees the weakened Carthage. Uh, now, here's the thing. Luckily for these two nations, now the Koreans are getting involved in the, with the Congo War. Jeez. As well as even Denmark, who's, you know, banished to Scandinavia. Um, uh, you know, <laughs> the Moroccans and Carthage have been doing this for a while. They never end up making too much progress. Ooh, France going after Mali. But there's, yeah, no, Mali's safe. Between the Zulu and Mali, they're, yeah, they're safe. Uh... I'm sorry, between the French the French and the Zulu, I, I don't think anyone's going to take over Mali. They are just, not unless it's Morocco, or unless Morocco falls. Uh, so Persia is already here, located. They have a lot of troops already located next to Mecca. The big, the big difference, the key difference here, uh, is previously when Persia went to war for the Suez Canal, they were landlocked to strictly a military land-based war. Now that they control Memphis, which was previously controlled by Arabia, uh, they can utilize their fleet in the Red Sea, which they have a few units, units, and, uh, and they can, you know, melee attack the city. That's going to make a big, big difference, as well as most of the Carthaginian army is off towards the, uh, the west. This is big, especially if they do, in fact, get the Suez Canal, because Persia will have done it. They will have complete access to the Indian Ocean, to at least the Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, not much more than that, only at three tiles, but it's still a pretty big difference because they can unify um, most of their fleet. And as of now, they can still move through the Persian Gulf to the Red Sea and the Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, but I don't know for how much longer if they don't grab some of these tiles, because I could see India uh, blocking their way, blocking their route. We'll see. So it looks like Persia is going to finally be able to do this. I don't. They'll hold on to it. I don't know if they're going to get anything more than that. It's going to be tough to attack Thebes, but once they take the Suez Canal, it'll be a lot easier. Okay, the other big war is the Ashanti-Congo War. Uh, and the Ashanti are, in fact, using their fleet. I don't know if the British are going to are thinking about getting involved. It'd be a smart move, I think, by the British. Well, it wouldn't be a smart move to actually take over these cities. It'd be... I don't know. The British probably don't want to get involved in a colony this late in the game in Africa, especially not Africa with uh, the insanity that happens in this continent usually. The Carthaginians are not pulling back. They are here. They realize that Morocco is running out of troops, although Morocco has uh, definitely rebuilt their navy, at least in the Atlantic. Let's go and check on Vietnam. Okay, so Vietnam has has a big fleet. I didn't. I guess I didn't anticipate that, uh, but so does Korea. Korea might finally be able to utilize this this fleet, which they you know for the most part have not been doing at all. Uh, but again, I mean, artillery units are going to be a big difference too uh, in this new uh, Korean Vietnamese war. Uh, that will make a pretty massive difference. And then maybe who knows? Maybe the Japanese will decide to join in on whoever ends up losing it. I mean, obviously, it seems like Vietnam, it's either going to be a stalemate or Vietnam is going to be losing uh, this kind of uh, Eastern Asian war. So maybe the Japanese will join in on the Korean side. Maybe not necessarily the Korean side, but they'll decide to join in uh, to at least attempt to take Hanoi. It is going to be tough. Wow. Yeah, that is going to be very tough. Yep, next turn, we will see the fall, the Suez Canal, and we'll see a very dominant Persia. Very, very strong Persia, kind of out of nowhere. Again, though, northern Persia is completely open to an attack by the Russians. I don't know what the Russians' plan is. Uh, notice that Poland no longer has given Poland... I'm sorry, Russia has no longer given Poland open borders. Uh, that's a telling sign. Maybe Poland won't be surviving very much longer in this campaign. We'll see. Yep, no, Carthage is fully invested in taking out Morocco. Even if it means losing uh, their eastern cities, I think they just want to take over Morocco at this point here. 
what happened? So, bam. Japan, massive disappointment. I would have loved to have seen a Japanese Seattle. Just, I just want to see a Japanese city uh, on, on the west coast of North America. Is that so much to ask? Is it really? Bam. There goes the fall of the first Carthaginian city in a while. I haven't seen Carthage lose very many cities at all in this campaign. These, yeah, and this kind of uh, massive force of great war bombers is really going to help the Persian military. Uh, they're going to continue onward too, I think. If Carthage isn't going to reinforce, Thebes is going to be completely open to an attack. Let's go and check on the Ashanti. Okay, so the Congo have now suddenly started started to rebuild. Rebuild. Uh, Ad was kind of back in, in terms of health. Ethiopia, I, I guess I maybe overestimated the Ethiopian army. They don't have very many units left anymore. Uh, so the Ashanti are definitely using their fleet in the Atlantic to their advantage. Um, but, you know, like I said, the Congo have rebuilt. They might be able to defend themselves enough. The problem is what will Shaka do? Will Shaka attempt to take back their two former cities? They might. Uh, Ethiopia and the Vietnamese, that won't make much of a difference at all. Um, I wonder what Siam is thinking now that... Wow, there's a massive, ba massive battle going on here. Uh, this is pretty huge, actually. Lots and lots of numbers flying all over the place. The Koreans are going to lose a lot of troops here. I, I will say that, though. They might take Hanoi, but man, they will lose a lot of troops. So Russia is going to be in an interesting spot. Uh, and the Ashanti declaring war on Vietnam. Russia is going to be surrounded by... Well, two nations that are, I, I would say, eventually starting to lose a lot of their military power. Um, and then, of course, there's always Poland here, which clearly the relationship hasn't been what it used to be. Without that open borders agreement, I mean, they clearly don't like each other as much as they used to. Because uh, the Polish were, like, moving through Russian lands, and they're moving far for some reason. I don't know if the Polish were trying to go after India or what it was. Thebes still not reinforced at all. Carthage is once again focused on the Moroccan city. They only have two melee units. They're still about two turns away from taking over this city. The, Moroccos, the, the Moroccans seem okay with that. The Moroccans seem okay with just defending their capital for now, maybe just surviving. Let's see what they do. Here's their turn. Ah, they have pulled back a little bit. While, so they've pulled back some of their army, which is smart. They'll still be able to take over this Moroccan city next turn um, while also reinforcing because Thebes will be under siege very soon now that the Gatling guns have arrived. Very shocked at the Persian dominance here. Very, very, very shocked. Uh, okay, so the Russians and Moroccans have peaced out with America. The Ottomans still consolidated and quiet. They have a few choices for themselves as well uh, with the Persians losing power. Um, that is, I think... One thing that, you know, th these wars that we see, that we witness right now, could be leading to something big. Something very big into the future. Possibly the fall of Korea. Uh, the Ashanti seem like they're going to be okay. Both, and the Congo. I don't know what's going to happen to Car Carthage, Morocco, and Persia, who seem to be all kind of media t medium tier sieves. I mean, Persia's doing really well for themselves, don't get me wrong. They are doing really well, so... I don't know, we'll We'll see. Uh, okay, so we have, yeah, Hanoi in the yellow. Uh, there was the Vietnamese defense. Bam. Carthage did, in fact, take over the second Moroccan city. Morocco's left with just their capital. Uh, this also makes it more difficult for the Mali people to survive. Uh, but now Morocco's going to attempt to take back their, their city. Uh, they actually have a very good chance of taking it back because Carthage is worried about their Persian front. Um, how are the Ashanti doing? Yep, the Ashanti have pretty much given up. The Congo started, they just rebuilt units like kind of out of nowhere. I don't know where they came from. They did not look like they had anything really. I, I don't know. Maybe the Ashanti are behind technology or something that I'm not, something that I'm not really accounting for. Uh, the Polynesians in Egypt. Interesting war there. Uh, Ramses that you've gotten yourself into. When you've made the Polynesians mad, that's when you know you've messed up. You know, for the most part, uh, Polynesia's, you know, pretty, I, I would say he's pretty, uh, I'd guess, timid. Not really timid, but 
It's not really a warring sieve. Not necessarily trying to go to war with anybody. Uh, notice how France, France and Spain have open borders. Ooh, okay, so the second big uh, Eastern Asian war has just broken out, and it's Siam versus the Champa. This has yet to have been a war, I think, so far. I, we've been waiting for it for a really long time now, but now it is it, it's finally started. Now, if the Siamese have a big technology advantage over the Champa, then they're going to have success here. But I don't think they do, as well as they don't really have that many units. So yes, Hanoi will finally fall. Uh, Carthage and Congo, so the two sieves that are kind of lacking. The two sieves that are you know, under siege here just went to war with each other. Uh, Mexico and the Champa. Really, there's no one else that can get involved with the Champa to make this war really any different besides the Siamese, who have just already declared their war. Well, I mean, I guess... Vietnam could dis be distracted a little bit by going after the Champa City, which is entirely possible. We've got Den oh, I'm sorry, Mali going to war with Egypt. We've got Canada and Siam, and oh wow, Colombia and Siam. Those are kind of big powers going to war after Siam. I wonder why. That's strange. That is very strange, actually. Hmm. Don't really know why. So yeah, there's there's a lot of wars going on now. The wars are uh, have definitely picked back up. We'll see if Colombia decides to do anything about the Siamese and maybe their aggressiveness. Maybe they don't like the aggressiveness that they've seen. So, yeah, two, I would say two continents are completely at war right now. I don't know. Asia is a big continent. Obviously, there's Russia and, and uh, India. But, you know, the Persia is involved in a war and they have a pretty huge chunk of the Asian continent uh, to themselves. I would say, yeah, I would say maybe we are in kind of a two continental war right now. Not necessarily world war. Of course, Latin America is getting involved in all sorts of uh, things outside of the New World. Bam, there goes Hanoi. Finally, uh, Hanoi has fallen. That took a really, really long time. So Poland has, has declared war on the Champa. We might also see Korea join in now that you know Hanoi has fallen. The British and the Mexicans are going to attempt to take over the final Mali city. Uh, okay, and what else do we see? Siam is going to struggle, it looks like. It won't be as easy to take over this final Champa city. Uh, Saigon, still surviving. I don't know for how much longer. Saigon is very easy. to. That would be a very easy city to capture uh, with, a most, with a powerful navy. Now that the Koreans have an access point, um, they could, they could you know, settle quite a bit of units, naval units, off the coast of Hanoi and then easily take Saigon in you know, a few turns. All right, so I had to vote. I just voted for the embargo of the uh, city-states. How is Morocco doing? Yeah, Morocco looks like they're going to take this back. Uh, I think France might be deciding to go to war with Carthage very soon. Thebes is under siege by, again, multiple Gatling guns. They need melee units, though. And I, I, it seems like Persia's either not really interested that much in attacking Thebes. Maybe they don't want much more... Uh, territory in Africa? Who knows exactly? But I'm surprised that France hasn't decided to join in on this uh, Carthage coalition. Yeah, so Morocco's going to take this city back. They might even have... A, no, there's there's no way. I think they're, gonna run out, they're probably going to run out of steam when it comes to attempting to siege out the Carthaginian capital. I think. Not 100% about that, though. Um, Canada? How's Canada doing? Canada still settling all over the place. Then think about this. I am. It does have a foothold. I completely forgot about that in the New World. France is going to settle Canada, modern day Canada. And there's a few little skirmishes going off here. A world ideology of autocracy has passed. That is really, really early. To see an ideology pass that early is incredible, and it makes a lot of sense. So, yeah, Korea is negative 26. Wow, I don't know if I've ever seen an AI this unhappy, this unhappy, especially at this stage on this difficulty in the game. On Immortal Difficulty, to see an AI at negative 26 overall happiness, um, that's crazy. So we will definitely see a radical shift uh, in ideology in the Korean Empire. The Ottomans, they don't have to, and, but if they do, it would probably uh, promote war, more war for them. It probably would, I would guess. Uh, but we'll see. 
I don't I don't know. I mean, I I imagine that they're kind of dealing with that whole problem where they're they're trying to balance the you know, the civil resistance or the revolutionary wave that they're going through as well as I don't know, they're trying to win the game, but I I don't know. My I pick the Ottomans. I I guess I so far, I mean, I don't want to like jinx anything because Persia seems like they're barely surviving. There goes the revolution. Bam. Yep, Korea's been forced to adopt the autocracy ideology. Not a big surprise there. So Russia has military access through Persia. Uh, that That's very strange. I, I don't know exactly what they could be doing. Maybe a Russian-Ottoman war? I don't know why they wouldn't be just going straight for Persia themselves. I don't know why Catherine is attempting to move to the south. Doesn't seem Doesn't seem like a very smart idea, I don't think. Uh, we'll see if Saigon probably goes and falls under siege. I'm guessing, I'm guessing they would. I, I, I don't know. Perhaps I, they, it really depends on a few things. Um, I, Korea doesn't really have the technology level, I think, to take over Saigon, but I don't know. I mean, it, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm just trying to think about it. I'm like, there's, there's too many factors here that come into play. I, I think that it, they would they need to upgrade. They need to get rid of these turtle ships first of all. Those are okay. Well, they're still good. They they did. They they just did right now. It looks like they met, might have upgraded a few ironclads, or or maybe they just moved them down south and the ironclads took their place. Since we, you know, have uh, movements gone. Oh yeah, uh, Morocco did take back their city. Um, yeah, because we have you know fast movement. That's probably why. Okay, so the British have declared war on the Spanish. We have the Polish declaring war on the Spanish. We'll see if anyone else decides to join in. The British have a pretty big fleet in the Atlantic so far. Yep, and the Ashanti and the Congo are in a stalemate. Uh, how is Persia doing here? So for the most part, borders haven't really changed. Besides the Suez Canal falling and obviously Hanoi falling, that's really been the only difference, even though there has been a lot of wars uh, that have been declared. Maybe that's what France is, is attempting here. Maybe that's what they're thinking going to war for the Spanish. Uh, not, a, not a bad idea at all. That'd be actually very smart of them, I think. The Cubans really had a missed opportunity of not colonizing more. They didn't do a very good job of that. Uh, so Siam in Spain, Egypt in Spain. Okay, so never mind. Maybe maybe Siam will take over the final Champa city, which would be nice. I mean, I, I would like to have a little bit of the borders kind of cleaned up and some of the nations with only one city eliminated. I mean, I don't, I like to have it give everyone a chance at the very beginning of these series, these campaigns, but at a certain point at the end of the game, I'm just like, let's just clean it up. Let's clean it up. You had your chance. You know, unfortunately, Champa are not going to win, so I would like to see, uh, you know, the Siamese have a very more consolidated empire, and this would be big for them. This would be a very major change for them. Uh, but I'm going to have to stop right there, though, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.